Hi guys, it's Josh Lloyd here for your Wednesday NBA DraftKings first look. Go ahead and hit subscribe, you're already here. Hit that little bell as well, get notified of every new episode. Give us a thumbs up while you're at it, and then I'll get into talking about the games. I'll just give you two seconds to go do that. One, two, all right, let's go. Let's talk about the games for Wednesday. We were supposed to have 10 games on. We only have eight now because two games have been postponed, the latest being the Jazz and the Wizards, so that game won't be going ahead. So an eight-game slate, which for DFS is right in the uh, in the sexy little wheelhouse for us there. The first game, the Mavericks and the Hornets. The Mavericks are going to be without, without a lot of guys. Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, Josh Richardson, Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleber, but... Kristaps Porzingis is coming back. Now, imagine Porzingis' minutes will be low. Um, so it's going to be more James Johnson and uh, Willie Cauley-Stein in that front court with some Boban maybe mixed in there as well. So I like Cauley-Stein at 4,100, and I like Johnson at 3,900. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to use both of those guys, but I do think that there is an opportunity for at least one of those players to go off and have maybe a 25-point performance, which at their salaries is a pretty good look. Now, again, using both of them is probably not the ideal move. Now, for the Hornets side, Bismack Biombo's at 42. No interest in that. While Gordon Haywood at 78, while he's been putting up some really big numbers. I like that. Really safe floor sort of number there for Haywood. Lamello's at 72. And that's because he's been awesome. He's been putting up great numbers. He's averaging almost 50 over his last three at 7,200. I do not mind that at all. I think he's almost a lock to get 35, which is pretty good. Well, Doncic is at 10.8, and that, to me, looks like a really strong price point. I won't want to use Porzingis in his first game back, especially priced at 8,400. While Devontae Graham's actually been okay, amazingly. 6,200 for Devontae. There is at least some value there in him. Not massively keen on Hardaway or Washington in this matchup, despite some recent good performances from both of them. The next game we take a look at, we have got the... Uh, well, that's not the right one because that game got cancelled. There you go. It is the Milwaukee Bucks and the Detroit Pistons is our next game up. We've got the Bucks massive favorites here, 10.5 pointers, and the total is 227. We know Killian Hayes, of course, is out for Detroit. Josh Jackson's been pretty poor lately. He's at 4,500. I would only look at him as a GPP guy. Sadiq Bey's been taking some of his minutes. Not massively into him, nor am I with Derek Rose. While Yanni Antetokounmpo, 10,600. The only thing holding Yanni back at that salary is the blowout potential in this game. Mason Plumley's minutes are a little bit too unpredictable, while Dante DiVincenzo's upside's too low. I'm not really looking at either of those guys. Jeremy Grant at 7,900. Never thought I'd be saying that, but Jeremy Grant at 7,900 maybe is underpriced. He is putting up big game after big game. And as you can see here, the last time he had under 40 was five games ago. Um, and he's just been consistently churning out big minutes, big usage, and high shooting percentages. He's been really, really good. I don't mind DeLon Wright at 4,800 as well. I don't think that uh, Portis at 54 or Blake Griffin at 63 are going to be spectacular moves. But there is uh, there's marginal value in them. But they're probably not the ones that I'm going to be looking at. Next game, we look at the Brooklyn Nets and the New York Knicks. It looks like KD is going to play. Kyrie won't, but KD will play, it looks like. 5,800 is the price of Mitchell Robinson. Um, that's pretty good. He's getting pretty good minutes almost every game, staying out of foul trouble somehow. I don't mind that as a floor play, which is wild to say about Mitchell Robinson. Julius Randle at 9,100. The wheels are starting to come off a little bit for Randle, averaging just 40 over the last uh, three games. Not not sure I'm, I'm in on that. Uh, I am in on Bruce Brown at 3,300. They just look really good with him at point guard today. I wouldn't expect that level of production where he dropped, what was it, uh, what, 33 DraftKings points today? Wouldn't expect that, but at that salary, he's got some value. Barrett's really tough to use. Alfred Payton at 66, probably a little bit overpriced, while Durant's at 9-4. He's getting assists, which is awesome. He had a monster today, 65 points against the Nuggets. No real reason um, that, are, that are massively yeah, into him, but... At a sub-10,000 when he's got that clear 50-55 um, point upside yeah, is is one that, that I am in on uh, and I am pretty excited about. Levert's at 8,000 and to me that salary is you know, very, very much on the high side and it's, uh, it's not one for me. Next up, 
The Memphis Grizzlies, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Carl Anthony Towns is questionable, as is Josh Okogie. I expect them both to play, but uh, it's a little bit worrying that they're both questionable after returning from injury. Jonas Valanciunas at 6,900 feels a little bit too high. I'm, I'm not um, not super in on that price. We know that JV can be pretty good, but it's just all about getting the right amount of minutes, so I'm not in there. 3,300 for Xavier Tillman. Now, Tillman's been getting you know, 18, 19 points. Do I want to spend that on him? I don't think there's, you know, maybe if I want to put Yanni and Doncic together, that I would consider that. I just don't think we need to get Tillman in there. 4,800 for Anthony Edwards is the ultimate GPP play. He can be absolutely dreadful like last game, or he can have these big scoring games on poor efficiency, but that is a GPP option. D'Angelo Russell's at 81. Maybe if we hear that Carl Anthony Towns is out, I would investigate using Russell, but that's probably about it. Well, Malik Beasley, he does you know, big scoring games in real life, but they don't really translate across to DFS all that well because he just contributes nothing else. 29, 39, 22, 28, and that's with him scoring you know, some pretty decent real-life point totals. Then It's not great at a 6,700 salary uh, point, so I'm not sure that Malik is really the guy that I'm super in on here. That The Wolves are two-and-a-half-point favorites here, amazingly, and the total is 220. Dylan Brooks at 66 is a bit of a GPP option for us as well. I'd uh, probably take Brooks over Malik Beasley at this point. The next game is a game where both, pl- both teams are on a back-to-back. Anthony Davis uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Davis is listed as questionable with a jammed toe. It's a back-to-back. I think they'll probably sit him down. Uh, LeBron will play uh, while Wes Matthews is out. While for the Thunder, I imagine we're going to get another Al Horford rest. And you know what that means? It means that it is unquestionably... I mean, and by unquestionable, I mean there's definitely lots of questions about it. Uh, Isaiah Roby time. Because last time that Horford sat out, Roby came in. And he was bananas. And he's been putting up some really good numbers of late, um, even in the, as a backup. The last time that he started, 28 minutes, 34 DraftKings points. At 3,100, I am absolutely all in. Now, maybe this bites me on the ass. Maybe Horford does, in fact, play, but I'm in on this one. I like Shea at 7,700. Shea Gildas-Alexander, for those of you who don't know who Shea is. LeBron's at 9-6. That's a rock-solid floor type of play. Not in on Schroeder unless you want to believe Revenge Games narratives, which are fake but you can buy that if you want. While MC Hamadou Diallo, 5,100. With what he's currently doing and the price of that, I am I am pretty okay with that, although he is shooting at an unsustainably high level. And I think people, like if Darius Basie was less than 5,900, I'd be in on it. People are off Basie at the moment, but I'd be in. But I think that salary is probably just a smidge too high for Basley at, uh, at this juncture. Next up, Atlanta Hawks, Phoenix Suns. The Suns are five-point favorites. The total is 228. Monty Williams making some sort of noise about he wants to change the starting lineup, and I can only see one option there, and that is Jay Crowder out and Cam Johnson in, unless they decide to go back to Sharich as the starting four, but I don't think they'll do that. Johnson's at 4,100. That's worth throwing into a GPP just in case that is the move that they make. Um, because he can come out, he can rebound, he can score, obviously. Chris Paul's at 7,200, and while we've been a little bit disappointed with Paul this year, 7,200 is a really good price for him. Capella is questionable, while Anyeka Okongwu is probable. Does that mean if Capella misses, they just throw a Kongwu in there to start straight away? Highly doubt it. They'd probably go with Collins and then start Herder, Reddish, and Hunter as the 2, 3, and 4, but a Kongwu would be in that rotation. I don't like 6,800 for Capella. Uh, I don't like 7,000 for Collins unless Capella is out, and then we'd be in on Johnny at 7,000, and we'd be in in a pretty big way, I think. And 7,000 for DeAndre Ayton is a strong, strong pass for me. Trey Young's been getting back in business. He's at 8,900. Um, really interesting sort of price for him. I think that he's at least worth a look, and I'd rather that than the 8,300 on Devin Booker at this point in time. The next game, we've got the Pelicans. They are taking on the LA Clippers. Lonzo Ball is out with bilateral knee tendinopathy. That is not a great term for uh, for a young kid like that. So we worry a little bit about what that means. I don't think it's considered to be anything serious. But that means we're probably going to get Josh Hart starting and we're probably going to get some big Nikhil Alexander-Walker minutes. So Alexander-Walker is priced at 3,100. Therefore, at 3,100, a guy that does not know how to not take a shot, Alexander Walker could easily be a 25 or 26-point player. Now, I'd probably take Roby over him at the same salary, but Nikhil is in business here. Serge Barker's at 6,000. That's too high. Kawhi's at 97. Love that. Really good floor value on Kawhi Leonard. 
Uh, Paulie George at 9,300, also a really good floor option. If there's ever a time to use Eric Bledsoe, it's going to be in a game where he's at least going to be handling the ball more with Lonzo Ball out. Zion's at 7,200. I actually, 7,300, sorry. I actually like that price for Zion. He should be able to, he's averaging 42 over the last three. I think he can beat that number and, and beat it at a pretty high level. Brandon Ingram's at 85. Eh, I just think we can find better ways of spending that sort of cash than uh, spending on, on Brandon Ingram. No, uh, no offense to him. The next game and the last game that we look at here is the Portland Trail Blazers and the Sacramento Kings. The Blazers are four and a half point favorites. The total is a whopping 236 and Yusuf Nurkic is questionable. Does this mean that they're just going to go in and yeah, play Ennis Cantor big minutes. They didn't do that last game. They went with Robert Covington and Carmelo Anthony as the 4-5, and they'll throw some Harry Giles in there as well. Now, Gary Trent's getting a lot of playing time. He's doing approximately sweet FA with it, but he is getting a lot of playing time. So at 3,600, there's some GPP value. Well, De'Aaron Fox, he uh, he put up the numbers last game, 43 there. I like it. Rashawn Holmes also in an absolutely dominating mood at the moment. He is listed as probable. He's at 6,400, but I do not think there's a problem with using Holmes. Holmes here. He looks really good. While Christian James McCollum is crushing it every game. 8,600 for CJ. Really putting up some good, good numbers at this point. Um, I'm not not 100% certain I want to use him there, and I definitely don't want to use Lillard at 95, but CJ at 86 does have some level of appeal for us. Buddy Heald's at 65. That looks gross. While Harrison Barnes at 6,700. I'm in on it. He's playing well. He's shooting well. His usage is good, and his minutes are absolutely through the roof. So I think there's value for the pencil in that one. That'll do it for the first look at Wednesday's games in the NBA. Don't forget, subscribe. Hit that notification bell you can find me at the josh lloyd fantasy basketball channel as well and i'm on twitter at redrock underscore b-ball guys we are done here thank you so much for watching everyone see ya